Before this video begins, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss an upload. Also, be sure to check out my affiliate links down below so you can get discounts on different car mods and products. Okay, let's get into the review. Hello and welcome! Today we are inside of a 2019 Ford Flex SEL. This is an all-wheel drive model. I would like to thank Flood Ford in East Greenwich, Rhode Island for allowing me to review this vehicle, and also to drive it, so that video will be out soon also. Their link is in the description below. This is a three-row SUV with seating for seven. This has about 30,000 miles on it currently, and stickers around $36,000. This is powered by a 3.5 liter V6, which is naturally aspirated, outputting 287 horsepower and 254 pound-feet of torque. This is again the all-wheel drive model, and it achieves 16 miles per gallon city, 22 on the highway, and 18 combined. This has an 18.6 gallon fuel tank. This rides on some 18 inch aluminum alloy wheels on top of 235 tires. There are four disc brakes here, and the front discs are ventilated. This has a tow hitch available and can tow up to 4,500 pounds. This is a mid-trim SEL, with Limited being above this. This does have four wheel independent suspension, a front and rear stabilizer bar, a temporary spare tire, this also does have halogen lights up front, with some fog lights down below, and it does have a dual stainless steel exhaust. And let's have a look outside. Alright, so on the outside of this, this is a Ford Flex. I've always liked these cars, they look really funky, but uh, really cool to me at the same time. So it has a very interesting grille right here, it has a gloss black line running through it, and it says Flex in giant lettering up there, instead of just telling you it's a Ford, so that's pretty cool. Also, uh, I think the lights, just in my opinion, and all this front styling, they look a little bit Range Rover-esque. I've always uh, thought that of these, and they look pretty cool in the little funky rectangular body style. Here are those wheels. They, uh, they look pretty good, in my opinion. This does have uh, some nice black trim up top, so uh, for all the window stuff and all the roofing, it is all gloss black. You do get some roof rails up there along with your antenna. You do get proximity sensors in here. And that just unlocked, as you can tell. And also, it does have a digital keypad right here. So, numbers would pop up right there, and you could plug in a passcode. It does have power mirrors here, and they do have blind spot monitoring inside of those. Once again, capped in gloss black. In the rear, everything is extremely boxy, as it uh, is intended to be. It's a cool little style. In the back, it once again has a flex stamped into the back plastic piece, and it does have your all-wheel drive and SEL badges. You do have your tow hitch, and you do have your dual chrome exhaust. On the right, you do get your gas cap that is always open, and there is a capless fuel spout, similar to most other Fords. It doesn't ride too excessively low. I think it looks pretty cool. I've always had a soft spot for these. These are a rather random car, but uh, I've always liked them. And they have uh, four lines running through the side like that to give it a little bit of angles. And looking under the hood here. This is your 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6. Pretty typical, typical engine. Looks good though. And that also is available with an EcoBoost uh, six cylinder as well. On the interior here, you do get your power window controls, of course and you do get your uh, door panel. So this is soft touch all throughout here and down below. And it also has this uh, zebra-ish like pattern uh, running throughout the interior. I think it looks cool. This door uh, handle does look a little bit cheap though. They didn't really put too much effort into just that area. It does have memory seating up here for the driver with two positions. And it also has a pretty big amount of storage down there. Also on your speaker, it does say flex, so that's cool. There's no door sill here. On the left of your driver's steering wheel, it is going to have your light controls over there, as well as your climate vent, and some more of that interesting trim, and that runs throughout most of the interior. 
for your steering wheel itself. It's actually similar to the uh, Ford Ranger that I just drove, a 2019 Ford Ranger. So make sure to check that out. But uh, yeah, it's basically the same exact wheel or very similar to it. Uh, it's leather wrapped, has some perforated leather, some little bolsters at 10 and 2, and uh, it feels pretty good in hand. This has a very similar gauge cluster to most Fords of late, including uh, analog speedometer, but the rest is going to be digital screens. So on the left, you get your speedo if you choose, or your tachometer, and on the right, you get multimedia, such as navigation and your entertainment. For your center infotainment system, it is going to be Ford's Sync 3 system. Very intuitive and uh, nice to use system. Has navigation too, so that is nice. You do get an auto dimming mirror also in the center. Down below that is going to be your controls. You get a hard volume knob as well as a hard um, fan speed knob. So you do get dual zone automatic climate control in here. However, these are uh, more touch capacitive sensors, so they're they're like slide type of things. I don't really love them so much. They work okay. They're not perfectly responsive though. It's just uh, they do look nice and sleek, but I'd rather have hard buttons. Down below that, you get a 12 volt charging port as well as a little storage bin. It's pretty deep too. Two cup holders are gonna be next to that and you get your shifter. And it does have sport mode in here as well as a shiftable gear setting. And your backup camera, it's not the best quality. That's not a Ford specific thing. A lot of cars just don't have great quality backup cams, but it does have moving tracking lines, so that's nice. For your driver's seat, you get power controls. In the passenger, they are manual, but they are both heated. In your center storage, it's a pretty pretty big uh, door to access that. You get two type A ports in there and a pretty deep storage area. It's a family vehicle, it should. And then for your glove box, it is damped, does its job. Up here you get your first sunroof, and uh, for your visors, this is sliding, so you can slide it like so, it's very stiff, but uh, it doesn't cover all the way, I wish it went a little bit further. You get some garage door openers as well. You also get two more sunroofs, so we will show you that in just a moment, but yeah, you get some interesting setups for that. As for the interior itself, it is uh, not too plush. There really aren't too many soft touch materials. Most of this is just gonna be a mix between uh, black, tan, and the uh, zebra pattern, but it's okay. It's, it's not bad. It doesn't look overly cheap. Could be a little bit more exciting with maybe some more color pops. So checking out the rear, it is gonna be pretty similar to the front. Uh, it has a, first off, you have a drink holder right there, and uh, pretty similar for the rest of the door. It is very spacious back here, as it should be. Um, I have endless foot well room, and uh, knee room is pretty good as well. So I'm six feet tall with pretty long legs, and I can fit back here comfortably. In the center, you do not get climate vents down there, but those are actually going to be up on the roof here. Additionally, you get a couple of mode selectors, as well as temperature and fan speed for those. And you do get a full household charging outlet, so that's nice. And if you pull out on this, you get two more cup holders as well as a storage bin. Very flat floor in here, which is nice too. In the center, you do get a little pull out for your drinks. This is a 60-40 split. You get storage pouches on each side. And uh, yeah, it's pretty spacious in here. You also do get two separate small sunroofs. So that is very cool right there. And they slide out like this with some sunshades. Very cool. And for headroom, it's very nice in here. Very, very high, of course, and the window sill is also very high. And to access the third row, you would pull up on this, and then uh, that whole seat would fold forwards. And back there, you have room for two. And uh, the leg room isn't great, but it's okay. It's manageable. It's more for smaller kids. And to access the trunk, you will pop this right here. It is a power lift gate. And behind the third row, you get a lot of storage, even with uh, the third row up, of course. And uh, yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty deep loading floor. And uh, a lot of storage bins throughout here. And if you fold them down completely like so, then they go pretty flat and you have a lot more room. And to close it, this is power, so you can push right here. As for my final thoughts on this Ford Flex, I think it's a pretty interesting car. It's always uh, looked pretty funky and cool to me. And um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. However, it's just, uh, it's a bit more economy based. I thought it would be a bit more luxurious in here. It just has uh, some rather basic materials for the interior. It's not bad. It's just um, a little more geometric than I was thinking. And uh, just uh, fewer paneling pieces. I thought it would have more, more interesting trim inside. 
but overall it is pretty cool. Alrighty, that'll just about wrap up my review of this Ford Flex. Make sure to check out my POV drive of this coming up soon, and also stick around for a quick audio test. Alrighty, thank you for watching and take care.